Salve a tutti e benvenuti. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I inaugurate TikTok Lab International. Inside your watch, the English version of my column dedicated to technique. In this first video of the column I want to illustrate how a watch is made, that is, the principle that underlies its operation and the various components that animate it. This will be a column, especially at the beginning, dedicated to new watch enthusiasts and collectors, in particular those who have recently entered this world and who want to understand a little better what is under the dress of their loved one's timepiece. I will try to produce videos that are as clear, simple and understandable to everyone as possible. In the first video that I will now present to you, I want to show you how a watch works, therefore the operating principle of a watch and the various components that determine it. Therefore now, after this necessary introduction, would say let's go and see how a watch is made. So to illustrate the functioning of a watch I made a very specific choice, I chose the simplest movement possible, a manual winding mechanism, hours, minutes, and small seconds at 6 which is by far the simplest mechanism of all. Now I will show you how a watch works, what is at the basis of the functioning of a watch, therefore the train of wheels that carries the force from the spring to the balance wheel and their role. The watch in question is an ETA caliber 1120. So let's start, so here you can see the basic components of a watch. Here we have the barrel with the mainspring inside, so this is the driving force of our watch, then we have the center wheel also called first wheel and on this wheel, Indeed on the pin of this wheel which as you can see is long and passes from the other side therefore beyond the dial, therefore the minute hand will be engaged on this pin via a clutch. In fact this wheel moves at the speed of minutes so it will make a complete revolution in 60 minutes. Then we have an intermediate wheel and after that the seconds wheel, this wheel also has, as you can see, a long pin that passes through the dial and the small second sphere will be engaged on this pin. So this wheel will make one revolution in one minute and will move with the speed of seconds. Then we have an escapement wheel, as you can see, the escapement wheel has completely different teeth compared to other classic gear wheels. In fact the escapement wheel will have a fundamental function in watchmaking which we will see shortly. Then we have the pallet fork, and this is the component that comes into contact with the escapement teeth, in particular on these two jewels which are also called pallet fork levers. Therefore these two jewels come into contact with the escapement teeth and in the tail of the pallet fork we have a sort of slot in which the balance wheel button will act. Here is the balance wheel assembly, it is made up of the hand wheel which is clearly the external part, then we have the button on the balance wheel pin which is a ruby, also called ellipse, and it is precisely the one that works in the tail of the pallet fork. Then we have this kind of winding that you see. It is the spiral which is nothing more than a hairspring that allows our balance wheel to oscillate. At this point we just have to go and see how our chain and therefore the train of time is made up, let's start from the driving force and therefore from the barrel. We have the mainspring, that is the driving force and the barrel housing. We have the mainspring, that is the driving force which is housed inside the barrel. Then there is the train of time, the first wheel or center wheel which engages with the barrel and as its name suggests is positioned right in the center of the caliber, then the intermediate wheel is positioned here, after which we have the seconds wheel whose long pin goes beyond the dial, finally the fourth component of the time train is the escapement wheel. Now it's time for the pallet fork. It is clearly housed here and, as I was saying, it works with the two jewels on the escapement. The pallet fork oscillates and is limited by these two limit pins which limit it left and right every time it moves. The pallet fork has the fundamental task of transforming a continuous rotary motion into an intermittent motion. For example, if the pallet fork moves to the right, then the left ruby frees an escapement tooth and it moves by rotating through an arc corresponding to a tooth, after which the right jewel will block the next tooth at this point with the rotation of the balance wheel which will clearly be mounted here on this jewel, with the oscillation of the balance the pallet fork will move to the left. By moving to the left the right jewel of the pallet fork will free a tooth in the escapement and then the escapement will move again by an arc equal to one tooth and so on. The speed with which the escapement will release one tooth at a time is precisely equal to the number of beats of the watch. 
In fact, the hourly beats are also the number of ticks that the watch makes in an hour, therefore the speed with which the balance wheel moves to the right and left. I went to assemble the bridges, then the plates that hold the barrel, then the part relating to the winding, then the gear trains but I haven't assembled the pallet fork yet because I want to show you something. Without a pallet fork what happens if I were to wind the watch? Let's see, I load it and immediately the force that I transfer to the spring through the charge is immediately discharged by the train of our wheels, so I load it and this force is immediately transmitted to the various wheels until it reaches the escapement. Now we have also mounted the pallet fork and therefore, as I was saying, the function of the pallet fork is fundamental because otherwise the gear trains would spin wildly and the escapement would also spin in an uncontrolled manner. Instead, the pallet fork performs this function of controller in the sense that it is created to pass a tooth at a time, transforming this continuous and rotary motion into an intermittent motion. Now without the balance wheel we are going to move the pallet fork slightly to the left and as you may have seen there was a clear snap of the tail to the left and an escapement tooth was freed. If we now move it to the right the same thing happens and so on every time the pallet fork makes a movement to the right or left the escapement releases a tooth. The pallet fork therefore frees one tooth at a time but now a controller is needed, a metronome that brings order and marks a well-defined time, this is precisely the role of the balance wheel. In the lower part, as I have shown you, it has a jewel tooth called an ellipse, which works in the tail of the pallet fork where the small slot you will have seen is located. At this point the balance wheel, through the spiral which is nothing more than a spring, makes the movement from right to left as if it were a swing that moves from one side to the other. If we think of the example of the swing to have perpetual motion it needs a push, practically every time the swing passes the center of its oscillation we imagine that there is a person who gives it a blow, a push. By doing so the swing will move endlessly until this push ceases. Returning to our balance wheel, the thrust therefore starts from the driving force of the spring, which is transformed into an impulse, into a thrust from the pallet fork. In fact, Every time the pallet fork moves to the right or left, its tail reacts by giving a small impulse to the jewel button of the balance wheel. It is precisely this small impulse that the barbell receives every time it passes the center of its oscillation that will push it, just like the push we give to the swing at each passage, and it is this impulse that will allow the barbell to oscillate perpetually. Obviously until the spring is unloaded. So this is the secret behind the functioning of a mechanical watch. In summary we have the mainspring, a set of wheels that have been designed in such a way as to have a rotation in one hour on the center wheel, a rotation for every minute on the seconds wheel, the escapement, the pallet fork and the balance wheel which regulates the functioning of our watch. The balance wheel is nothing other than the beating heart, the one that maintains the so-called perpetual motion and also the one that exactly marks time through a well-defined and ordered period of oscillation. Then in the next columns we will see how the balance wheel marks time and therefore precision, then we will also see the various roles of all the components that come into play in our movement. For now I hope that the basic functioning is clear, then we will gradually go into more detail. This column is intended as a sort of path aimed especially at those who have recently entered this world of watchmaking or who in any case have not had the opportunity to delve too deeply into the mechanical aspects. In fact, I have deliberately tried to address my story in a somewhat banal way without using too technical language in order to make it as clear as possible, therefore those more experienced or in any case professionals in the world of watchmaking will forgive me if my story can be it seemed a little too basic but this wasn't the type of user I was addressing. Therefore, having said this, I hope that my description has been clear and has encouraged you and that it has left you with some more information on how a mechanical watch actually works. Thank you for your attention and we'll see you again in the next episode. Goodbye.